I had talked to Jamie. I was like, look, Jamie, if I seem like... I, I'm not the biggest advocate for my own film right now. I said, I've been working on it for a while. He's like, yeah. He's like, so you wrote it and directed it and edited it and did the visual effects. And, and I was like, yeah. And he's like, you don't meet many people like that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess. I, I said, I, I just have a curiosity for like, technology and stuff. So. Everybody have their beverage of choice? Yes. Did you need anything? I'm going to grab a beer, I think. Right. I'll go grab beer. Yeah. yeah. Then when you get you back, want a glass of wine? When you get back, we'll hit go, go live. What kind of beer? It's uh, a little salt and citrus. Oh. Sure. sure. Yeah. yeah, I'll say yes. <laughs> As soon as we think it's back, we'll hit go live on the Facebook page. And we'll live. Oh. So have you been streaming to Facebook or to? Yeah, I've been doing it to Facebook just because it, it alerts the 46,000 followers I have. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Whereas like Twitch alerts the two followers I have. <laughs> I've been doing, I've been working on much lately, so I haven't had a chance to do much live streaming. Okay. Have you been uh, Have you been continuing work on the book or? Yeah, well, Kickstarter and the back end of that, and trying to get a uh, system set up for fulfillment. Okay. And I should be getting the funds from Kickstarter sometime late next week. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Yo, does it take them a while to? Uh, yeah, they have to process all the cards and some cards don't go through and then they give people some time to like put their shit together and uh -oh, okay. And uh, they do all their on their end and then they deposit the funds into your checking account or whatever account is set up. Yeah, I checked back on the page it said I think sixty three thousand. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. Kickstarters are it's weird, dude. I learned a lot about uh, what I didn't know about direct marketing or direct advertising. You know, <coughs> All right, you guys ready? We can hit record. We can hit it once you get up here. I'm gonna press go live. I'm gonna press it up here. Oh. When you do it on the screen share, it'll show it the same way. So you said you learned a lot about uh, what, running a uh, campaign? Or? Yeah, well, the direct uh, targeted advertising on Facebook. Yeah. She hit get live and all cheers. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Our guest today. Hey. Cheers. 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 Filmmaker extraordinaire. <laughs> yep. It's happy hourish. We're gonna have uh, some fun. Get in here. It's we're, <laughs> we're going to uh, be doing a live demo with uh, our friend Tony Leach here. I'm gonna mm -hmm. be make, painting his portrait while we discuss filmmaking. Yeah, or whatever he and feels like talking about. Process <laughs> of production. Well, I would like to right. talk. About Look at about Jesus. <laughs> the chaos theory. Yeah. Uh, we can definitely talk about that. I'm a. Well, yeah, one of the subjects would be our. Uh, uh, so we're live. We're, we're live. live. Yeah. 
Are we recording? Uh, yes, recording to the hard drive. Okay. Uh, and, uh, so am I allowed to vape on this? Program? Yeah, you're allowed to vape. Uh, I'm going to turn off that air conditioner for a bit until it gets too loud because that's going to leave a lot of noise in the back yeah. there. As you can tell, this is a professional uh, production. As is. <laughs> yeah. Figure it out as we go. That's right. Figure that's it out as we go, productions. That's pretty much life. Isn't that it? is. And a lot of the discussions we've had since making variants um, have been oh, figured out a lot as we went along. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, um, because that's what idiots do. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, let's be, let's be. <laughs> now, actually, you and I had a discussion today. We were like, look, if we if we decide. If we saw this like to do more time for pre-production and stuff, we're probably not going to wind up making this film. So, and we wouldn't have. And we wouldn't have. Um, so I think for the first film, like it was a good idea to not uh, to not have it all figured out, you know, yeah. like because I think that it really would have been like, no, we can't. Do that. Yeah. And we still would, even if we would have waited, we still would have learned things that we never would have known until we dove right. into it, you know, right. and figured things out. Particularly, um, even I did a bunch of research on SAG, mm -hmm. which we can talk about now later. Our friends. But uh, we, we, we had to learn a lot of the hard way with, with, with them. So yeah. What did you learn the hard way? Well, so cost number one, and, and number two, that that they're they're not set up to help independent film, and they're not set up to help their own um, actors. You know, the the ninety eight percent of them that aren't going to be collecting on the uh, the pension, the pension yeah. plan, and and also that they they basically penalize you for doing SAG ultra low uh -huh. budget films, and they penalize you in a way that you have to put in a bond, and then you, then they're going to. I just remember I have so much tension, and then you have to put up so much up front that it ended up becoming a little over ten percent of our, our whole budget, our yeah. production. So, and that's not even paying anyone. That's just just to do business with SAG, and they know that, and they don't care. They're just like going to stick their their knee on your throat and say, "Well, you wanted to do do this," and I, I don't think that that's the spirit of independent film, and I don't think that's the spirit of what. Any organization should do to uh, to when they have, you know, literally thousands of out of work uh, union members. Like ninety eight percent of them are out of work. Hmm. Well, I don't think any of that is in the brochure. No, it's not. In the brochure. <laughs> so I know that that was. A, I don't think there's anything in there that I've said. I mean, maybe the ninety eight percent, maybe it's ninety seven, maybe it's ninety six. I don't know. But I don't think there's anything in there that I said that was that was bad. Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, like, that's, you know, definitely one of the hard, you know, sort of, like, more leaning toward the negative lessons, you know, that we learned, that, you know, but we did learn a lot of other uh, positive things, too, about what not to do. Uh, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That Tony punches like a girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe I do. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't punch that. Uh, uh, <laughs> the way that the, the girls are punching these days, maybe that is just a massage. That's, that's true, yeah. actually. You know, that's interesting. That is an interesting thing that... Um, that used to be like a, a like a, a thing we would say as kids. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh you. Oh you know you. I throw had like coaches a, yeah. and teachers say that to me in front of all the Yeah. Class. And just obviously not cool. Yeah. Like when you think about no, it. No, you think like about a, it. It's just like a, it sounds so uh, archaic and it does. And, uh, I felt archaic. Unintelligent. Yeah. I'm gonna drag my knuckles when I leave here. Okay. Um. um but. Um, but yeah, for the life of me, I can't remember right. anything that we learned. Uh, positive. <laughs> <that's> positive. <laughs> uh, well, we, we did learn that that there are, that uh, 
you know, there's a lot more pre-production, I think, time that we would want to give ourselves. For sure. Because For sure. there were things that we learned that we needed pre more pre-production time on, yeah. and other things that you don't really need that much time on. Right. You know? um, and I think, you know, also because we were all wearing a lot of hats on the film, um, yeah. you know, the, the idea of like, okay, well maybe, you know, uh, creating a budget or, you know, getting enough funding for a budget uh, since this is all, you know, this is all something that we funded ourselves, like yeah. getting enough uh, funding for a budget so that we can have some key people in place that we didn't have this last time, which is, you know, you were producing, but then you were also the locations manager. You know, you're also pulling permits, yeah, and, pulling permits yeah. and yeah, doing all kinds of stuff. I was doing so. uh, yeah, accounts managing and yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know that any of that is. Uh, anytime I start talking about something that I feel like is maybe not all that interesting, like it's all like we're talking about like paperwork and stuff like that. I think of the scroll uh, for the for episode one of Star Wars, oh, and, he, yeah. and then he starts talking about the Trade Federation and like the, you know the, all the senators, and I'm like, hmm? <laughs> like whereas in you know A New Hope, you know yeah. episode four, it was like the Galactic Empire has you know uh, and the rebel forces, and it's just all this like it just is all very uh, adventurous, right? <laughs> the one for episode one was like. Kind of read like an IRS document. It was just like, oh, yeah, maybe we're in trouble here. So, <laughs> sorry, George. I know you're watching. <laughs> I'd be surprised. Dude. <laughs> so it's funny. Yeah. So, um, am I? Do, do I need to just do what you're doing? Okay. I'll figure it out. Yep. Probably need more beer. I don't know if I, uh, I've heard people have good sides and bad sides. You only have one side. I only have one side. That's right. Bad. Okay. So so side side. Speaking <laughs> of the dark side. So Gabe, you painted our poster yes, for us. I did. Uh, for a variant. It's um, pretty awesome. I should probably go get it and show the audience. The Man, this is going to suck in the summer when it gets to be 180 degrees. We're going to want to do this downstairs, I think. Yeah, uh, just good. because of the, uh, the elevation. Yeah, the it's just, air. yeah, and uh, the air conditioner obviously makes it too loud to, right. to do this. And, uh, right. To do it on screen, I mean, to, for the live cast. Right. So I'm just going to fucking wing it right here. Pardon my language. Uh, <laughs> if you want. Apologize to your mother, yeah. Gabe. Somebody's got to apologize for me. What's so, you doing, Dave? Uh, I apologize for you all the time. That's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> now they talk about other things. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're there too? <laughs> <laughs> um, sure, remember, I'm picking the portrait here, Tony. <laughs> Horribly wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, before you even said anything about his mom, he already made you have a pink face. So okay. I'm already screwing it up, I'm sweating on my elbows. So that's uh, good. So Gabe, where are the gloves? Uh, for see all that paint that I've already got on my hands. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have it on my hands, and so I don't oh, have okay. to keep washing my hands. And and uh, if you wash your hands with soap a lot, you end up wiping all the oils off your hands, and your hands get dried out and cracked up. Okay. Plus, I'm less likely to put my hands in my mouth, like touch my face with my gloves on, so I don't get paint everywhere else. Right, right. And that's it's mainly a habit, so that I've found multiple good excuses for. Okay, so it's not because you're known as the surgeon of paint. I might take that up. <laughs> paints are... Paints with surgical precision. <laughs> it's more like paints with like uh, the precision of a shot putter. <laughs> Chocolate precision. <laughs> right, right. That's something you don't see advertised a lot. With no. shot put precision. <laughs> Has anybody ever taken their shot put career to great heights? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. 
Mm. I don't know. Do you ever have a Wheaties box with a shot put? Uh, no, I don't know if I ever had a Wheaties box. <laughs> uh, who buys Wheaties? Um, champions. <laughs> champions Wheaties <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> champions <laughs> champion <laughs> breakfast eaters. I'm the champion of breakfast. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'm a champion. I was a champion. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Show's over. Yeah. Tony yeah. felt it was. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we were just dead. Yeah. Was dead yeah. Yeah. His, Waited uh, an hour, called an ambulance. Yeah. Uh, probably get a lot of views. We probably yeah. would. Um, Maybe we get a lot of reviews because the. Yeah, the viewership is. So tell me about the the process of the combination between your ideas of what you wanted the poster to look like, and then what what came out in your how it all came together in your perspective. Um, well, you know, I think the big thing was I wanted uh, a poster that didn't look like other posters that it would stand out in some way, and so. I've been a fan of Gabe's art and met Gabe through you. Um, and since then, uh, we've become arch enemies. Uh, Gabe it's true. Yeah. Um, you would know about this painting, but you might. <laughs> actually, you might know by the time this is over. <laughs> <laughs> you might be for you to arch enemy. Uh, <laughs> All right, right. <laughs> I well, a portrait, like no other portrait. One where it didn't even look like me, it just looked like something like a lot on the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but he's doing it. Whatever it is. Um, yeah, so I, you know, and I had seen Gabe's art, which I always thought was just immediately uh, striking. Like there's just uh, something about Gabe's composition. Go on. Go on. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's like it's very, uh, it's very recognizable, like instantly recognizable. Like, oh, That's that great. must be that guy. Like, it must be the same guy that painted that. Painted this other one that I like because it has a very unique style to it, and so I thought that having a um, poster painted by Gabe would be um, would be something that would have that you know effect on other people as well, like something that's just visually you know kind of striking the moment that you see it, and so um, and for that reason I think it, it being a painting as well. Um, Hopefully, it will stand out a little bit. Well, also, the art, there's art that, I, that you guys see is going in the film, too. So it's yeah. Like, it ties into the film. It's not like just completely like. Yeah, that's right. Choice. Like, I like how you see my phrases, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there was a discussion, obviously, between yeah. the two of you, and, and then. Uh, Tense negotiations, I would call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over how yeah. many beers? Over Chinese di dinner. Yeah. 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 It was like it's a wonderful uh, afternoon. Some beers. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, uh, I said to Gabe, hey, I'll help you, like, I'll make you a Kickstarter video because Gabe was doing his uh, Kickstarter. Yeah, I was getting ready to start that. Um, for the books. And I was like, so let's do a trade. I'll help you out with the Kickstarter uh, video and you paint the poster for the variant. And he didn't say anything, he just took his beer and went, clink. <laughs> so like, Nicely done. So nicely done. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So uh, hopefully, um, yeah, it'll be up in you know like the OD stores. And, uh, I mean, not. I mean, it will. It will be. Not hopefully, but the poster. Um, yeah, I hopefully it'll stand out in the same way that you're hoping. Yeah. Did you turn the music off, Dave? No, I didn't. I think we, we shut it off. Or you shut it off earlier. I realize there's a microphone on this table, so I should probably try not to tap my foot the way that I've been tapping it. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah. So while this is a, this is one of the easier jobs that I've had, 
sit there Sitting and, uh, here, drink beer, <laughs> vape a little bit. <laughs> and talk about uh, uh, yeah. nonsense. Yeah. Um, yeah. A, what do you want to talk about? Square right in the middle of our... Uh, yeah, that's just on the finish screen. It's not like the SDG. Gotcha. <laughs> that's screen. Gotcha. I moved it. <clears throat> so, so I'm going to have you kind of, for a bit, just look at Dave a little bit, kind of keep okay. your head the same. You can keep it sit like that, just so your head in a similar position. Okay. Can I, is it okay if I'm crossing my right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So I'm looking at Dave like this? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so the easiest job in the world is just that. Okay, got a little comfortable. You spoke too soon. I waited for you to get comfortable, and then I changed the rules. So after watching the film, Gabe, after you talked to Tony, I remember you watching the film and had to give you some ideas of just imagery that jumped out of you. And then um, how did that um, transfer into the actual... Well, when I do any sort of project like that, I um, sort of, you know, watch the film or read the script or whatever it is, and... There's usually things about it that will jump out as sort of a uh, an essential symbol of the film, I guess. And there's there's something underlying it, you know. So when I was watching this, I just screen captured things that caught me visually that told that, that were part of the story. And uh, so to watch everybody's, you know, gotta kind of get some sort of way that it's not the creepy dude, but it's also kind of a one. Mantic story in a weird way, and so it was, the idea behind the book was capturing this sort of something you know, that looks romantic on the surface, and then you know, upon further investigation, it was weird to trust the guys maybe just creepy. Right, right. So that's where I was supposed to say, Yeah, and that's, uh, so that screen, kind of that screen capture is from Dave, you're here to be the Dave proxy. But the screen capture was from a shot of the film, which is um, them on the beach, right? Yes. Right. 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 Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was, from, it was like from one of the sort of cutaway scenes. That, you know, like it wasn't even part of this main story of the film. It was like a sort of fantasy. Fan like right. So, yeah, the sequence is like that. But it, it struck me as being like, sort of telling about what the story was overall. Mm -hmm. you know, like it was an insight. Yeah. So the trick is, is to, like, the thing hard to like this is to try to distill down an image that captures the overall feel of the project. So whether it's a play or a movie or, or a book or whatever. Right. It has to feel like um, it captures it seems to be somehow. But without being so detailed that it has all the, all the, all the, uh, it gives the show away, you don't want to give it a show away, you want to just get right. two people to get my idea about. It's almost to the point where it stands on its own, on its own merit, it just keeps it part of it, but once you've seen the process, the film or the story, it takes on another significance, it makes more sense to you. Right, right. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way of, uh, that's a really good way of looking at it, that it's something that you would look at on its own, yeah, even without the context, but once you have the context, it's like very, it's that much more significant. Yeah. Know, yeah, I found it early on in my career, like when I was doing some illustration work, that uh, when I was doing the topics of clients, they always seemed to kind of fall short, like it didn't quite work that well. Like, I didn't end up with the best piece of artwork, and then I do my own personal projects for my portfolio, and then it looked really cool. Yeah. And I could figure out why, and then I realized like, I was, oh, I'm making art. You know, so I started taking projects I was getting and decided to uh, make it as though I was going to make it as much of art being on a wall rather than worrying about it being for the project. So now we're going to get, you know, trying to put every like, little uh, symbol of the film or the project into the painting. You know, that's pretty fantastic. Right get the sort of emotional quality or the, the vibe of the story, right. which, is, which is often, you know, something done very simply. The simpler you can do it, the better. 
Yeah, and it is, uh, it is actually, you know, like, in terms of the subject matter, I think it is a very simple uh, painting, like, in terms of that, but there, but like you said, there's, these, there are these undertones, and like, at first it looks like, oh, there's a, uh, it's a couple pissing, but then you, when Dave and I were discussing it, because I actually asked Dave, I was like, so why did you, because that was the one that he, he said, 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 this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Yeah. That's why I bought a case. A bag and then you bought a bottle. To put it in. To put it in and then you cap them. Yeah, I cap them. Yeah, I cap them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's the uh, Citrus Innocence. Am I doing okay as far as like, keeping my attention focused? No, you're good. You're good. It's, 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 it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I know you still have some. I am wearing your t-shirt though. Oh yeah. 100% business. Oh. We should talk about your t-shirt business. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really have a t-shirt business. It's a thriving that's business. The that's, the name of, t -shirts. that's the name of his t-shirt business. I don't really have a t-shirt business. I don't really have a t-shirt business. <laughs> I guess we are all wearing uh, yeah. designs. We did. We all wore uh, the t-shirts today. We all wore the leash. Uh, oh, funny. I yeah. know. Yeah. 100% business class. Um, 100% business <laughs> class, yeah. Yep. Um, this one oh, it's cool. is sometimes you got a vent. Uh, <laughs> just a picture of a vent. Yeah. I like it. And uh, Dave is wearing, uh, what is it? Uh, have you seen this man? Oh, and what is varying about? Thanks, Dave. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. So, yeah. variant is about uh, a creepy guy. What did we sell? A creepy guy. Not really. A kind of a love story, not really. Yeah. Um, that has some science fiction. Sci fi. Color, yeah. I guess a, a little bit of horror overtones. Overtones. It sounds like it's a mess when you, when you it talk about it that way. It's, it's, but a, it's, it's a total it, mess. It kind of comes together, which, which, uh... I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, what it makes it curious, I think it really makes it curious, and I think it makes it a more cerebral film, because it's not trying to be a genre or, not, or any one thing. It's not like we... When we, when we started the project and we started talking more about the script and more about what we were shooting and then there were very specific choices, I won't go into them, but there were very specific choices that Tony made um, and we talked about and I agreed with him, but Tony made the choice ultimately to make the story he wanted to tell and, and that's what part of the, uh, the film that I love about it hmm. oh. is that you continue to make choices as the auteur to tell the film, tell the, tell the story that you wanted to tell. And, you know, you don't get a lot of opportunity in life to do that. Right. And, and I, I, I hope that because you told that the story you want to tell, and I, you know, like the story that you told and I like the film, that it'll, it'll find its audience, you know, once we put it out there. And, you know, a lot of companies, distribution, sales agents, things like that, once you get into the world of the business of filmmaking, they all want to start putting you into little boxes because that makes their job uh, way easier mm -hmm. or something, right? Uh, putting a name attached to it so then they just pump everything behind the machine behind the name or m the machine behind the genre or the specificity of that genre of whether horror or sci-fi or whatever. So everyone's looking for an easy way out, but I think that when you make your own film, um, it's, you just put it out there to stand on its own, mm -hmm. and it forces everyone around it to do the same, you know, that comes on board with it. And so that this is, it's a much harder way to go, but I'm way more proud of that mm -hmm. than, than if you would have done, you know, the easier road to say, you know. Right. And we didn't know, we kind of knew in the back of our mind it was going to be a harder road, but 
but we didn't care. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think that's the thing, is that... Now you're all paying for it. Now you're paying for it. It sounded good when I said all those things. Yeah. No, I, yeah, it, it is one of those things where when we were um, talking to distributors, we were like, so what, you know, what is it? And we said, well, it's kind of like, I mean, it does blend um, a number of different I think tonally is pretty consistent, even though we're um, kind of taking things from different genres and um, putting them together, you know, putting them together in this puzzle. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not. Um, you know, I, I think you and I were first talking, and I was like, "Well, let's set out to make a horror film because there's always a market for a well-made horror film, and horror is the one genre where you don't really need." Fact, a lot of horror films, you know, uh, at least in the past, um, you see more people popping up than now that you recognize. But um, for a long time, it was like, you know, it's generally uh, where actors got their start. You know, Kevin Bacon, Johnny Depp, you know, like all these, uh, all these guys, uh, I think, you know, did. Uh, I think that Johnny Depp definitely was in the like, Friday the 13th. Or was it? Or was that? Yeah. yeah. Although was he in it? He might have been one of the ancillary characters when he was a kid. Yeah. 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 But he. But there were uh, other things. Oh no! Johnny Depp was in Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. And I think Kevin Bacon was in Friday the Thirteenth. Don't quote me on that, Kevin Bacon. You look at your own. Six degrees, Kevin Bacon. Just watching right now. Yeah. Six degrees. Oh yeah, I uh, I actually I I could play that game. You got two? No, you probably two or one. Um. Well, at the time it was I was in a movie with Mickey Rooney. Okay. Um, So I haven't done it for a while, but it was Mickey Rooney. Back when you and Mickey were kids. Yeah, back when Mickey and I were kids. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it was, I was in this really, uh, I mean, it was very low budget film uh, with Mickey Rooney, and then Mickey Rooney was in Eric and with uh, Tim Robbins, okay. and then Tim Robbins was in JFK, is that right? With Kevin Bacon? Kevin you know what? I mean, I make films like I. Yeah. On. I can't. Re- I can't remember. Is, 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 is Mickey Rooney tiny? Is, is he... he was. He was small. Yeah. Um, but he was really. <laughs> I remember they were shooting his coverage, and uh, this isn't saying much for me as an actor. Um, but he's like, "Get out of the way, kid. I don't need you." And I was like, "Oh, okay." Like he didn't. He, he's in. I could have sworn just watching him, he was talking to somebody across the table, but there's nobody there. <laughs> it's just like, so, so I, yeah, I mean, he was really, he was really, yeah, he was really good. Um, he's, you know, he's also like a bit salty and stuff, you know, too. And, uh, sure. But, uh, but yeah, he was definitely like, you could see the years and years of, uh, of doing that. You know? yeah. Like, I, I didn't necessarily even think it was. I didn't take it personally because I was like, oh, this is just, this is what he does. He's a jerk. Well, the thing about that. being on set for years and years and years, yeah. and there's not a lot of fun on set. You know, there's the craft of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I can see, you know, there's the artistry. There's the directors doing it for you all the time, but the, the actors, if they're on and then they're off, and then there's a lot of waiting around, and a lot of sitting around, and yeah. a lot of boredom, and a lot of... So I can imagine that you've just been doing that for years and years and years. Yeah. Um, you know, um, got to wear on you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, I think that I'd be salty if I was an actor and I was old and I'd been on <laughs> I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't, he was not, yeah, he wasn't by any means unpleasant. Like, he was actually pretty, like, jovial and engaging. But, you know, he, 
He yeah, said some off color things here and there. Was <laughs> this no, no nonsense kind of guy? Well, um, or was he all nonsense? He was. No, he wasn't all nonsense. He was, I, I think. Yeah, about 56% nonsense. Modern, modern nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was actually really, uh, he was very um, professional and like, like I said, just kind of, um, I don't know. It was, it was interesting to, uh, especially because my, I grew up and my grandmother was a huge film buff. Um, so I grew up watching a lot of classic films. Yeah, so what, what got you into the music is drawing out of time. So So what got you into uh filmmaking? What what what's sort of like this is what I wanna do? Um Well, I think for a lot of people my age, um it's like thirty seven? Uh, yeah, 30. <laughs> no, I'm going to be 51. 51. Really? Yeah. I don't know, I guess the 40s maybe. Yeah, 51. Crazy. So, so, how does it feel to be old? Uh, it feels, uh, you know, I don't know how it feels to be old. I haven't read the AARP. <laughs> so, but I'll get back to you. You have been getting the mail. I'll get back to you yeah. <laughs> one second. <laughs> um, one second, one second. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, <laughs> let's get Storm off the set. Uh, no, he's, he's a young I'll Storm off the set with my cane. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, what got me into filmmaking, honestly, I went to, so I'm old enough to have seen Star Wars in the theater uh, when it came out in 1977. And, um, and so it was actually the shot of overhead of. Uh, Getting um, yeah, just to make sure. Oh yeah, it's good. Um, so it was a shot of uh, the star destroyer, you know, coming overhead, you know, and just and it just kept rolling by, <laughs> and I was like, wow. Oh, that shot is yeah. awesome. Yeah, and, and an epic shot. I mean, and so I uh, I I was like, oh my gosh, I want to make movies. <laughs> at that point, and um, so what was the first movie you made? Like, what was the first sort of? Um, well, I shot. Um, my dad and I worked on some Super 8 films together. Uh, so the first one was called The Space Connection. Uh, <laughs> you know, like the French Connection, uh, but in space. So, but my, uh, yeah. My is that the Star Wars brilliant movie? script, yeah, definitely, definitely. Because I actually went and like made my own little star destroyer and like built a model out of like you know balsa wood and cool. plastic, and then took you know battleship models and like put the pieces all you know glued them on all over. Because I had read in um, this magazine, you know, uh, like there were all these little special effects, is what they called them at the time. They, now it's visual effects, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the special effects being like the practical uh, application. Sure. Right? Yeah, and that's still the case today. Yeah, and that's the, still the, the case. The special today. effect. We had special effects in our. That's true. Film. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We so we had the mask, and we yeah. had you know, yeah, different. And then uh, uh, the some blood uh, and spatter face. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, there was uh, um all these magazines that like. Uh, one called Cinefax, which it might still be around, but that was kind of like looking at the uh, productions from a professional standpoint. Um, you know, all the green screen work. Or mm-hmm. At the time, it was blue screen work. And, you know, yeah. um, and uh, there was this other one that was made for like amateur filmmakers called Cinemagic. And um, I don't remember where I was reading about how they built the models for Star Wars and what they did, like cannibalize all these different, uh, you know, models uh, from airplanes, you know, airplane models and like battleship models and stuff like that to deck out uh, like the Star Destroyer and the X-wing and you know, all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, that kind of like that fascination just kept going, and I think you know, 
watching the films that, uh, especially that like Spielberg was making, uh, really just solidified that I wanted to make movies. Um, you know, just a uh, a kid growing up in Wolverine Lake, Michigan, um, <laughs> dreaming about sure. <laughs> going yeah, to Bruce Springsteen song to this or Mellencamp. at least John John Mellencamp. Yeah, <laughs> right. John Cougar. John Cougar of Mellencamp. John Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Wolverine River. I, I realized like years ago that there's uh, um, John Mellencamp always said, "Oh yeah." In his songs, and then uh, James Taylor always said, "No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no." And then, yeah. So I don't know if that's a difference in worldview or not. Maybe. But, um, what did Springsteen always say? Yeah. I'm the boss. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Nobody knows. <laughs> not even Bruce. So then, from yeah, I know you went to school, and then we'll skip forward to um, you made a, a film that got some recognition at Sundance, right? Oh, I didn't make it. Or you um, mean you were part of the Yeah, the so I was the assistant director on that, but it was a group of friends that we had been together, like, working on production stuff for a while, um, and they had a company called Blue Yonder Film, so we've always... You know, so we did a lot of client work. You know, they would bring me on, you know, to work with them. And if I had something that I was doing, uh, you know, I'd bring them on. And then, um, yeah, so Todd Edwards uh, wrote and directed Chilla Coffee, um, which is uh, a Native American word for a gathering place. Um, it's also a place in Ohio. Yes, actually, that's what I, he, so Todd grew up in Ohio. and. Um, so I knew it. Yeah. So he Ohio grew, is like no way to get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> Once you've been there, it follows you for the rest of That's your right. life. That's right. Ohio! You are an honorary Buckeye, whether you want to be or not. <laughs> I lived in Columbus, right. Ohio for four years when I went to, I went to art school. Oh, you did? You went to uh, OSU, OSU forever? No, I went to uh, Columbus College of Art Design. Oh, okay. And then I went to OSU to sneak into frat parties even though know, I didn't drink. <laughs> and uh, my friends did, and then we ask if John was there and then we get free beer. <laughs> Is John here? Because there's bound to be a John. There's yeah. a John, yeah. So we did that one time and we got the first three names wrong. Fourth name. Is John thing? here? Uh, Doug. Doug? Doug? Uh, Mom? Mom? Mike? Mike! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is the name Wonderfunkel? <laughs> yeah. And then I just used the name Wonderfunkel after that and it gets you into everything. They're, they're, they're my things. Nobody wants awesome. to admit there isn't a Wonderfunkel. That's yeah. why. Right. <laughs> It sounds like a Chevy Chase kind of thing. The, the uh, cat's out of the bag now. I mean, that's a that's a secret. Mr. Uh, Wonder, that was a secret. Wonder Funkel. Do you get the name Wonder, Wonder Funkel at uh, at restaurants? Uh, speakeasies. Strip clubs and speakeasies is where. We went to a speakeasy in Denver, and I uh, called them up, and they were all full, and I said, "Well, if you get an opening for Wonder Funkel." <laughs> They laughed, and then I played it off, and I said it like nine more times before I hung up, and mm -hmm. then, uh, and then I got a phone call uh, like an hour later saying, "We have a spot open for you, Mr. Wonderful." <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. Uh, of course you do. That's and then we showed up, and then uh, it seemed like all the staff was waiting for to see what Mr. Wonderful looked like. And yeah, they were not disappointed. They weren't. Wow. Did you come in wearing a top hat? Who knows? Okay. <laughs> you don't remember. Yeah, we only remember the wonderful part. <laughs> <laughs> and going part. Yeah, and it, it was had a basement. nothing to do with the drinking. It was in the basement of a hotel. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was the basement of our hotel. Oh, uh, yeah, the hotel we were staying at. Oh, really? We're staying here again. We're go yeah, so we're going to Denver again on uh, 4th of July weekend. Oh, nice. Hopefully he puts us in the same hotel. Come awesome. along. I, it's a great time. I know. Fourth of July weekend. I, I told myself, uh, so I've been out in this, uh, I said so. and the Montrose, allow myself to introduce <laughs> myself. Um, but I've uh, been out in the Montrose area for about three years now, and I there's a site that I do. Mm -hmm. um, 
And yeah, we've been talking, I've been, well, I talked about going, I was like, can I just have a follow through? Yeah, yeah, it's actually, well, I, I got sick, so I haven't done it for about a week now, so I'm sure I'm gonna, there's gonna be some huffing and puffing when I get back on the trail, but try to do it every day, and there, if you get up to the top of the mountain there, um, it's supposedly a great place to watch the fireworks because you see the fireworks all, all around, around the city. Around, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a, a 360 panorama of uh, fireworks. It's kind of like my aunt and uncle. It's oh, not really? a 360, but they're on a hill in Fullerton that looks over basically all of Orange County. Okay. And it's 180 view. Okay. And you also look out towards the islands and everything. So, Dave, that's 180 less. Than this is. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds uh, that but sounds then you have Disney day. going off right off, yeah. Right there too. Right. So you have some, and then the coup de grace for that is is that the Bulletin City blasts their fireworks uh, from a the high school, which is right in front of the hill, mm-hmm. and it launches in front of right where you're sitting. Wow, so the fireworks actually go off right above you, and it's spectacular. Wow, it really is. That's really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, we have some comments on you guys. Let's see what oh, we got a lot of complaints. A lot of complaints. Okay. Oh. Please Good. get better guests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we got the music <laughs> fixed. Jake, come back. I hope you're still watching. Man, there's just no way to get around that. Either it's deadpan quiet, or it's like. Is it too loud, loud or it's copyright violation? Uh, does it have to do with the way, uh, like the levels that it's mixing? It has to do with I have one microphone and it picks up that sound over everything. Oh, uh, you know, yeah, we were yeah. all like separately mic'd and I was playing the music. So, but this isn't a high dollar production. This is uh, my production. Oh, <laughs> I was told something different. Well, where's my per diem? <laughs> It's just outside that door. <laughs> <laughs> outside the door. Don't find it. Uh, you yeah. won't miss it. There's a guy that needs some furniture moved. Yeah. He will. He will <laughs> <miss it. laughs> and you come back and knock. Like, We're not here. Yeah. And you're like, but it's Wonderfungal. We're like, oh, Wonderfungal? Oh, Wonderfungal. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we were living in, uh, well, I had moved out to Los Angeles, but the guys were living in, uh, I had moved from Tulsa, Oklahoma, to L.A., and the guys were still in L.A., so we made it um, mostly in, I'm sorry, I said the guys were still in L.A. The guys were still in Tulsa. I was in L.A. I came back to work on the film. Uh, we made it mostly in Tulsa and then also in uh, Indiana. Okay. Yeah. And so... Um, yeah, so after that, um, I, you know, you basically just do whatever you need to do to stay in L.A. and pay the bills. And so um, I had been writing uh, for, like, freelance clients uh, for a while and just got to a point where I was like, you know, I don't think that there are any bridges between what I'm doing right now and the work that I want to do. And I wrote down this thing on my, you know, I'm, I'm not left-handed. I just have... Uh, that's right. Not that there's anything wrong with left-handed. You're, you're, there is. You're, there's there's you're telling you're telling stories you're left-handed. Yeah, I'm a left-handed storyteller. Um, but so I, I I don't know why I'm I'm also Italian, so I have to like uh, the history on it, talking with my hands. Um, so I just wrote down this thing on a post-it note that just said, "Doing the work you want brings the work you want," and I put that up above my. Well, put that above sure. my desk, yeah. But at the same time, I was still in a position where I had to pay my bills. But I was like, well, I'm going to save like my creative energy for things that I want to do that that are going to mm-hmm. be like not things that are like what I want to do because the things that are like what I want to do kind of like say for instance, if you're a writer and you're writing copy all day for somebody, sure. um, I think that exhausts that muscle for writing what you want to write you know so like when Stephen King was writing Carrie I believe he was doing hotel laundry you know like bed sheets and pillowcases and you know 
all this stuff and, and writing Carrie at the time, but he wasn't working as like a copywriter or a yeah, you know, so he wasn't exhausting his talent, right? Right, um, because I think that sometimes that's maybe the most dangerous thing, which is to do something that's like what you want to do but isn't what you want to do. Um, so, um, but at the time, so I actually let go of my freelance clients. Um, and then I was like, wow, I really need to pay the bills. <laughs> so I got a job, um, a temp position at the Natural Hi uh, History Museum in LA in the marketing department where I was, um, where I was honestly, like you just like the cliche is stuffing envelopes. Like that was actually my first day on the job was stuffing envelopes. And then um, they, had some footage that they had shot, and I was like, hey, I can cut that together for you. And so I did that, and then I, um, that turned into um, actually shooting PSAs and stuff for their, uh, for their installations. And you're like, now that I think about it, it's like, that's kind of what I just said, which is things that are like what you want to do. But the but thing that was, but it wasn't what you were doing. No, the thing that was yeah. the thing that was nice was um, I was actually getting more adept um, as a you know as a cameraman as a um, you know as an editor you know and I was just continuing to like hone some of those skills, which was really nice. Sure. Um, but then um, what I wound up uh, when I was doing that, um, so press and assessment. Todd Edwards and Corey Edwards called me and asked me um, if I could cut the story reel for what turned out to be Hoodwinked. Um, and there, in fact, I was driving Corey to the airport to LAX at one point. He was like, we are trying, we've, we've tried every version of a title with hood in it. That he's like, under the hood, like, you know, you know, all this stuff, like, and we just haven't come up with a name. I was like, what, what, what about Hoodwinked? And like, seriously, we're like, well, we're driving in the car. And he's like, I like it. <laughs> Why hood though? Uh, just because of Little Red Riding Hood. Um, so they wanted to play off of Hood, and so I suggested Hoodwinked, and uh, we wound up uh, going with that. But and it fits the f the story, the film, the whole thing. Yeah, and then Corey wound up coming up because I didn't have a. He and I wrote a screenplay that we wound up selling to the Weinstein Company later, um, and he wound up coming up with the name for that, which was Escape from Planet Earth. Okay. Yeah, because it was about aliens making so a you return the favor. Area Fifty One. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like one of those things when you have a community of people um, yeah. and you all, you know, like it's just cool how you can play off one another and how things get better um, when you do. Sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, so do, doing doing um, animation to doing live action. Um, what about each? Um, directing and working in both areas, even maybe even writing and starting at the writing perspective that you enjoy or don't enjoy or, you know, or you could tell the difference to somebody who doesn't know. Um, well, you know, I, I've said it before, um, not that anybody's, <laughs> I mean, I've said it in conversations before, okay. right? Um, <laughs> but I feel like, um, I feel like making an animated film is like making is very similar to making a live action film, in, but making it in slow motion mm -hmm. because you're still doing things. You're like you're working with actors, you know, when you go in to do the uh, you know voice recording mm -hmm. sessions and stuff, and you're working with them not as just like you're working with them as actors, not just like hey say these lines, you know, kind of thing. So. Um, the one thing about animation that I think is tough is that it takes so long to do, and there's so many steps to doing it. So first of all, you, you know, obviously you write the script, and then you'll do uh, what's called a story reel, which is basically pencil sketches that might be kind of slightly animated, you know, just like big movements, you know, here and there. Like the Pixar story reels are very, um, they're very elaborate, and mm -hmm. ours weren't not that elaborate um, but still you know there's enough of enough panels to give a sense of like what's happening in the scene like this character moves from here to here so it's like slightly animated 
and that's done to cut like 10 uh, voices. And then you just cut that and recut it and recut it and recut it. Yeah. Are those two stops? No, they're not two stops, no. But yeah, you just keep keep cutting it and recutting it and recutting it um, until you get it home to where you want it to be, and then you uh, do the uh, and then you start into the animation process, which is well, actually, then you do the voice record with the actors, then you put all of that into the story reel. So, and the big reason for doing all of that is because you don't want to be animating big chunks of the film that you're going to then take out later because once you get to animation it's really expensive you know to do that absolutely stuff. so you want that sound you you want to have that visual yeah um story lock yeah yeah basically so you in a way you almost have like picture lock before you even start picture. animating yeah yeah, picture. yeah. Um, so and the, the thing that makes that difficult is it takes so long to you know, get through the whole process that it gives a lot of people um, a chance to second guess themselves. Like, so things that are working, um, you have to remember that they're working and that they were working. And even though you're, you, you've seen it for the 300th time now, it still works. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and that was another reason for, um, at least when I was writing the script for um, Escape from Planet Earth, um, which, you know, they wound up, uh, it, so Corey and I have uh, story credits in that. You know, they wound up bringing out some other people, but when I was writing that, I was like, okay, I want to make sure that I want to, I wanted to steer clear of like a lot of pop culture references and stuff like that, because if you do that, it dates your film. It dates your film, because by the time you actually get it out, that, yeah. That thing that was uh, relevant relevant today is like now. So, so if you're gonna do any kind of like uh, pop culture stuff, like I think the best thing is to like do something that's more like classic pop yeah. culture. Yeah. Muchas so. gracias. Still, are you still good? I'm still good. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I I totally think that that's something that I. I would agree with and I you know South Park can do it because they turn it so around so quick so and the animation quick. is so um, rudimentary yeah so yeah. to speak that but that's something they turn around in a week if, or whatever two weeks well and they yeah they've got that pipeline set up down yeah it's so been a long time um, but when you're doing you know a when you're doing like a theatrical, theatrical yeah. It's years out, yeah. right? Sometimes, right, and then sometimes the marketing gets involved, and then it's even further out, right? Um, and then they're looking at when they're going to slide it into the theaters. Yeah, because I started working on uh, Hoodwinked in two thousand two, and then it wasn't really released until uh, two thousand six. It says two thousand five, but that was just like early release before Christmas to. <laughs> to qualify for the Oscars, like as if that was going to happen. Like, uh, I mean, I'm proud of the I'm proud of the film. Um, well, even maybe but, back then it wasn't as saturated as a market. I, I don't even know if the word saturated is right for it because it really isn't a lot of quality qualifying animations mm -hmm. for the Oscars. But even back then, in 2005, I don't think yeah, there weren't there weren't that many. Yeah. So if you struck a, well, they don't have a feature. Uh, they do, they, do they not have a category for feature animation? Yeah. They used to not when, it, when, it, when I was wanting to get into feature animation back yeah. in the day. Oh, sorry. I'm looking back here. No, that's, no you're fine. Okay. As long as you keep kind of coming back to that. Okay. You can you know, get around. Mm -hmm. All right. So I, I, mm -hmm. The whole painting is just a vent. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. It's my knee. <laughs> it's my yeah. knee. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming along. All right. It looks kind of like you. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Oh, I'm just going to. So okay. I should make um, this face. Is that the one you want? <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those where if you make your face, if you keep making faces, it'll get stuck that it'll way. It'll get stuck that way, yeah. When someone's making a portrait, yeah, that's what'll happen. <laughs> Are you painting in oil or in uh, acrylic? I'm painting in uh, good or vibes. With, with good vibes? It's good, yeah. Okay. No, it's oil painting. Oil painting. Yeah. All these oils here. 
So this is good practice for me because I don't do a lot of live portrait, you know, painting. So it's right. it's more of a deliberate practice for me. So I can, mm. you know, it's 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 nice to have a challenge where someone is doing a little bit of movement. Uh, okay. Because what happens is if you get otherwise you get too down into copying a surface detail, it doesn't quite look right. Uh, so like I, there are some of uh, which. Uh, people watching can't see, but there are some uh, self portraits that you did. And did you do those by Actually, looking can, into Actually, they're right behind me here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, uh, so some of these, like these, I did in the mirror, and a lot of the older ones I did by taking a photograph. Okay. Photograph. Okay. So all the ones I do. And that one's me. One of those. <laughs> all the ones I do now, though, are uh, generally from a mirror. Okay. Oh, so Dave, the, you are, this camera is working on the... Uh, yeah, so it's okay. just in the bottom right corner of just me who, you know, gotcha. being the sidekick to this conversation. You're the, uh, the Ed McMahon. Or look up the... Douglas camera, so. Or look up stuff online. <laughs> when one of you talks smack about something, I'll be like, I'm Googling that! <laughs> Noodle. Don't kid yourself, Jack. Oh, you're a tremendous slouch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Is that side phone? No, that is uh, Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Yeah, oh, of course. I, <laughs> uh, I knew that. So, you know those friends that you hang out with that have like three movies that they just quote over and over and over again? Am I that guy? No. Oh. You are not. But I have a friend that back in Chicago that quotes Caddyshack like every day. Really? Yeah. yeah. And uh, of course, he's a golfer. So you know, I, I, I had all of them in my head all the time. <laughs> and, uh, cool. Pun, 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 pun your head. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely a uh, um, a much quoted. Uh, well, you know, like I think for uh, my generation as well, like um, the Big Lebowski. Was it? Oh, my quote. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Still. I, it's, it's a great film. It's a great so. film. And that t-shirt. Uh, really like uh, what is Lebowski uh, Rugs? It's Lebowski Rugs. Yeah, yeah. Ties Lebowski the area rugs. It's not scary. It ties the room together. It really ties the room together. Yeah. So, I recently went, saw a film that, that um, I read the, the, the script for and stuff, and I, you know, made notes and then they saw the film and and um, some of the things you had made notes on the script yeah and then some of the things that they that I saw issues and problems with the script you know and this has happened a few times but it just happened recently so I'm thinking about it but you know they they, they obviously came through in the film in the film oh so they didn't they didn't uh, they make didn't, changes they didn't make yeah, changes yeah. they didn't make adjustments and then that's the big note of the film now is how do you fix that in post with what you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, um, so I can imagine, like, uh, the, the, the desire when you were talking about, you know, living with, in animations, what you've done. And you gotta, like, just keep, keep going, that works! Yeah, right, and right. And going through that has gotta be torture, in a way, because... In a way, it kind of takes away some of the creative creative process because maybe you did find something better, you know. Oh well, we did we did change some things. Yeah. Um, you know, there were definitely things that we changed, and we actually moved big chunks of the story around. You know, so it was scripted in a certain way. You know, so I want to, um, and that's really where my co-writing credit uh, came on Hoodwink is when we started doing that kind of stuff and moving things around and creating new. Uh, scenes, you know, to kind of tie things together and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, uh, it, you know, it's one of those things where it's the old adage that, uh, you know, a film is written three times, which is, you know, once when the writer commits the words of paper, second is when the actors and the director committed to film, and the third is when the editor uh, uh, builds the picture and you know, constructs the picture. Um, and so, yeah, we definitely saw that in kind of a microcosm on, on Hoodwinked. And, and the, the good thing is, you know, and I would actually love to be able to do, no matter 
if it's, you know, whether it's a live action film or an animated film, I would really love to be able to make a story reel uh, for the film. <laughs> you know, if I had that kind of uh, pre-production time and I had that kind of budget, like, because I think that it illuminates things um, that you just don't see otherwise, that you just can't see on paper. Because there's certain things in Bar you know, with Varian, because I, I wrote the script fairly quickly, but you know, did a, a lot of rewriting on it too, within that time period, um, based on notes from you, from Josh Green, from Drew, from Mark Mullenkamp, like all of our uh, circle of friends. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, made changes and it looked to me like really good on paper. And there are things now that I look at and I go, oh, I would definitely change that. But not being a big studio production, we can't necessarily go in and reshoot, you know, that stuff. I don't think that they're fatal flaws to the film, but I do think that they are um, challenges that, you know, wouldn't have been there, you know, for the viewer. If, uh, if we would have had um, a bit more time, and if we would have, if, especially if we would have made like a story reel and like said, okay, yeah, how is this playing? You know, here does this feel slow in the beginning? So on the, on the page, it didn't necessarily feel slow to me, um, but then when we uh, committed it to film or to, in this case, digital, um, it was like, oh, okay, I feel like that's there's some pacing issues here. And I think we've done a lot of things to rectify that, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the in the um, cuts, uh, you know, that have been done since uh, the since the rough cut. Um, <coughs> but there's, you know, it's one of those things that uh, I'm I'm basically talking everybody out of going to see variant. That's <laughs> you know, what I'm trying to do. I'm good you at see it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great, <laughs> great. Um, independent film that you see I think so much um, I recommend eating a weed chocolate before you see it too <laughs> I, I, I've heard that I've made a, a film that might be uh, that <laughs> stoners might find it interesting <laughs> although stoners are hard to please yeah, they are hard to please yeah. for some reason yeah. they they're the reason. harshest critics said that when they sober up <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think it's just a, it's a gem of a little film to, to, to see, and you know, I think it, it, it also captures the, the spirit of the, of the film, and, and um, you know, after making such, having such large budgets and working with, you know, named talents and different things that, you know, that coming, coming to, to the independent film, you know, world, and, and then, um, bringing just the craft, right? Of mm. What you can you what you what you can do. So, was there any part of that 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 in the back of your mind? Because you've never said once. I never heard you complain once about it, or say anything about it. You know, um, and um, I never asked you this question before. You know, so it'd be, it'd be interesting to me now yeah. to know like. The, the, was there at any time where you were like, you know, ah, I just want to. You know, I wish I were back in the studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. studio. Um, Make that call. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, bring me a PA yeah. and have me punch him in the face, and then have that person pull me around in rickshaw around the studio while I scream at everyone. <laughs> so that happened. Yeah. That happened. Um, well, no, you know, not. Rickshaw. Well, I know. I want a rickshaw kick right now. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think that um, really the only place that it came down to it was on the uh, when, once we got to the sound side of things because we had we had um, you know we had a, a buddy of ours uh, named Mark Kiefer who's now a, a, a picture editor he's actually working on an animated film for Alcon uh, right now um, okay but he was a sound designer on the film and then we took it to Skywalker, uh, to Skywalker Ranch, and they did all the Foley there, and you know, they did, um, so we were able to see them uh, on the Foley stage, and like, uh, did all the Foley, and then like Gary Rizzo, who's like now gone on to win like two Oscars for Inception and Dunkirk, mixed the film, uh, and 
And so, like, that was, like, that was sort of, like, uh, you know, that was very, um, that was such a great experience, you know, and, you know, staying on the ranch, like, I was up there for probably about two months total, like, oh, staying. And in, stayed on the ranch Stayed on the ranch months. for, like, two months. Yeah. And having been, yeah. you know, seeing Star Wars, as you said earlier. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I in was, the theater, and then having that get you into sort of Yeah, I was filming. geeking out, for sure. Yeah. I mean, they, they took us on a tour of the archives, like, with, you know, so there's, like, the model of the Death Star, like, the... Was it, like, the... The incomplete Jones? Death Star from, uh, from, uh, Return of the Jedi, and, like, the Yoda puppet, and, like, all this stuff, like, it was really, really cool, so, um, and, like, different, you know, models, like the Millennium Falcon, and, um, so... Yeah, so that was, uh, that was, you know, probably the only thing, like, during the process that I was, like, you get a little spoiled, like, when um, there's this team of professionals doing all of this uh, work for your film, um, and obviously it's just not realistic on, a, uh, on an indie budget, right? Like, it's just, yeah. you just can't, like, you know. Like, two months to do sound. Are you really done? Like Are you done? I think so. All right. I'm done for now. We can keep oh, talking. Right. Okay, well, um, why don't you sit up here now? Because I am done with that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got one viewer on the online. So this is the uh, Tony Leach hey. live portrait. All right. His eyes so, are closed. Yeah. Ooh, his eyes are just dashing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Slipping up over there. Yeah. Just, nice. Well, thank you, one viewer. Thanks, for Tony, for being here. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Talking about yeah. your project. For sure. And uh, yeah, so we'll see everyone next week. Next week. All right. All right. All right. So I just hit this in live stream. Oh, yeah, that was cool. Cool. Um. <coughs> so let me bring up that. Let me get software here too. So, are, is it available on Facebook to watch? Like, if people want to watch it, yeah, after it'll, it'll uh, process and then. Uh